Hi, I'm Mr. Miyagi and this is Mr. Miyagi's workshop. Well, today we're going to take on uh, putting together a set of, of flywheels for uh, an 81 shovel head. Uh, my old shovel head ran into a problem with uh, the crank pin where the rod bearings on the crank pin ate in and tore up the whole crank pin, which then caused the back of the cylinder wrist pin to loosen up and then chew up the cylinder. So let's talk about crank pins. Now this is the stock crank pin and I ordered one, I ordered a crank pin uh, setup and rod uh, kit from s s Well actually another company that goes through, I couldn't go directly through s s but I got everything. Uh, I got the, the new bearings and I got the new rod assembly. These are a little heavier duty, so it should be nice. The problem with it was is that this uh, keyway and the location of the oil hole is different than the stock pin. You can see that this one, the keyway here and the oil hole are a little bit closer, plus it's outer set. So it's the wrong kingpin. Well, I guess in 81, they had two different versions. They had the early version, and then they had the later version, which I didn't know I had. And anyway, uh, this, kink, uh, this crank pin won't work because it blocks off the hole. So I ordered a new one. And this is uh, one from uh, Jim's, um, and uh, it'll work just fine. I mic'd out everything. Everything is great there. Plus, I'm using the larger, larger nuts off of the S and S one. Now I'll save this one for an earlier one because this will work on the old 74 cubic inch, even back to I think back to the knuckleheads and everything. So no problem there. I'll just put it off in the corner. And along with my, uh, I might make something weird out of that. I don't know yet. But anyway, uh, I had to remove the, I had to remove the, uh, the keyway pin out of there. And I've reset that up in this one. And then this is, you can see with the S and S too. It is a two oiler and this is a three oiler. So it oils all three bearings. The stock one just oiled and then the oil carried through on all this. Um, I mean, it works fine. And I've read a few articles saying that this might be overkill, over oiling. But uh, I think because of the hole size, you can see that these hole size and are slightly larger on the on the S and S one, where these are slightly smaller, and then on the on the stock one, it's a large hole just in the center. So hopefully that won't make too big of a difference. Um, but I'm thinking that I'll get a better oil coverage right here on this uh, Jim's crank pin. Anyway, we need to get to it. Uh, we're going to end up having to lock in this one side uh this one side this is the the cam side um flywheel which actually has the the keyway in it another thing i did too is i replaced the the shims on the inside these were all wore out yeah you can see that these were pretty well worn out where the bearing cage had eaten into them and and such so i ended up replacing those um i don't these are i believe are the originals from 1981 so not bad <clears throat> i was able to find new sets so i put them in on both sides here um you can see well get that back together again one of the things that you want to make sure and is that we talked before on is that this little oiler hole, everything lines up with that because the oil comes through on the end of the crank here, comes up through there, in through this hole right here, and then out these three holes here, which lubricates 
um, the rod bearings. Now I'm going to use some uh, assembly lube. I like this stuff here. It's pretty the ultimate slick. It sticks pretty good, which I'll be greasing up stuff with. Uh, I'm also going to be using this on uh, the crank pin, avoiding this hole because you don't want to plug that hole up. Um, so we'll be applying it loosely around this, this outer edge right here. And then on the regular, on the nut itself, we'll use the standard Loctite. One thing you want to make sure you do is you want to clean this surface of any oil or uh, lubricant or anything that was applied on there originally that came when they came from the factory. So you want to clean that all off of there, make sure that's good and clean so that you get a good contact on uh, your uh, Loctite. And then another thing is you want to make sure that this is good and cleaned out. And I always kind of suggest too is to blow out this hole. So I'll do that. I won't do it to bore you right now, but um, we'll put that together. Um, so what I'm going to do is I also, I set up a, uh, went and bought a, uh, well, a cheap inch and a half uh, socket and then chucked it up on the lathe and you're kind of wondering why well i smoothed this surface off on here so that i could get in there and get down to where i could grab a full grab on this nut and then you'll see later on when we do the do the torquing on this because this will get torqued about 220 to 250 pounds of pressure on this nut Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a little bit of um, this Loctite. So I'm just going to apply some around the area here. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to stay away from that hole there. So we're just doing a little bit of this around the edges. Trying to stay out of the bearing area smooth this out a little bit just a thin coating so now this will go in into the crank itself boom and now <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to apply a little bit of uh, red loctite to the threads themselves so this is going to go, I'm going to tighten this up and then we'll take it to my clamp down area so we can tighten it the rest of the way. So I have this clamped in my press and we're going to see what we can do for torquage. Okay, we torqued it to 250 foot pounds and uh, We'll get the other side set up. Here again, you want to make sure that you get your crank pin cleaned off. And we get this surface cleaned off. One thing we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to set up and put uh, the, the rod and the rod bearings on. So, okay, I've got the bearings and everything slid on this. They have a, SNS has this nice little kit for sliding it on and uh, <clears throat> worked pretty well. Um, I'm getting ready to apply the, the retaining Loctite. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind though, is that when you're lubricating this, I always like to lubricate the bearings and everything, but I don't want it on this where it goes into the crank itself. Uh, you want to keep that clear. Um, so that your Loctite will work. And you also want to make sure that that's good and clean. I'm just using a little bit of acetone there to, to break it up, get it nice and clean. Okay. And I've already, but we'll do it again, um, wiped out the inside of this. Now I also want to make sure that you put your... Uh, this is your rear setup. 
This would be the back of the engine. This would be the front of the engine. And you can always determine that because that's where the keyway is. So let's move on here. We're going to put a little bit of, we're going to apply it to this edge right in here. Um, we don't want this retaining stuff to go into the bearings. And you don't need as much as you think you do. So what I'll do is I'll apply that with my finger with a nice little rub around. What we're going to do is we're going to slide this on there. And then we're going to turn it a little bit. And what that does is that helps set everything in place. Now we're going to take a little bit of our regular Loctite and we'll put some on the threads. Now before I uh, do any tightening on these, I like to get these as close as possible. We're just seeing how close we are before we tighten this up because then we'll finish truing it but I'd like to try to get it as close as possible. Pretty good. So we'll tighten it up. <clears throat> It's looking pretty good. So we'll take it over now and we'll put it in the stand and then we'll do a torque down on this nut and then we'll do our, our truing. All right. Now we are torqued. One thing I want to do too is I want to put a little lubricant on my tips here. I've seen guys do this a different way. I ended up buying this thing or I bid on it in, in an auction and I picked it up for 90 bucks, but it was missing a few parts. So I had to uh, come up with the stuff that I needed. Like this crank here was missing. All right, so let's set up our gauges. I just put this cover on here for the protect the bearings and everything. Tell you what, I'm going to switch over to uh, a uh, fast feed because this is going to get kind of boring here. Me playing with this, you can get an idea of on the truing. And it's real tough to actually do this. Like I said, I just happened to pick this up at an auction and I was real happy to find it. Well, it's the following day and uh, I got the flywheels all trued up. I put them in the case to fit it to make sure there's some stuff I have to do to this case beforehand, but I checked uh, the run out and everything on this. This turned out quite well, checked all the, uh, all the fits and everything, I think it's going to be just fine. So uh, yeah, yesterday was a pretty long day of trying to get these wheels to sit this way this way and be together and um, sometimes it just takes forever to do these and uh, but that's the way it happens other times i've done them and 15 20 minutes you're done but yesterday was one of those days i was trying to get this thing torqued around Plus, I've never used, uh, this is the first time I've used this truing stand, uh, one I bought. So there was a little few things that I had to learn about the truing stand to make it work properly. Okay, I got uh, the cases all cleaned up around the edges. Um, what I've done too is I've uh, put in a little bit of lubricant. The main gear bearings on on the cam side, I've gone around and oil, uh, greased those up with, lubed those up with uh, this. One of the reasons I do that is just because uh, the initial start, you're not sure when that's going to be. So you want this stuff to have some sort of uh, lubricant on there. 
and uh, also lubed up uh, the roller bearings for the cam in there while I was at it. We're going to insert this into the case. Now one of the things I've done here is I've bolted this case down to a stand so it makes it easier to, to do the insert. And it can be a little tricky at first. You just work at it. Now I've already installed the Timpkin bearing and the new races in the case. So one of the other things that we're going to do is we're going to apply some more of this to the bearings. Get those all lubed up. Like I said, you know, the initial start is where you really need this. And then make sure you do some on the races on the inside. I'm going to put some of this gasket dressing on there. Uh, it's fuel resistant. Um, it's Permatex. It seems to work quite well. You don't get a lot of leaks in the cases. But I like to go around and brush this on. I find brushing it on works a little easier. You can get a little bit more accuracy in uh, putting this together. Now you just want to let that um, sealant dry to the touch. Uh, one of the things I did for uh, putting these uh, main seals in, and you got to remember when you're installing these, when you got it in closed primary and oiled, they go this way. When you run an open belt drive, they go with the hard face on the outside. I like to lubricate these a little bit before sliding everything together. And I'll put the seal on there, and then I'll actually do a little bit of lubricant on the outside of these. It just helps get this uh, to slide into place. Now, I'm using the, the, the crank bearing tool to insert it. I made this a little adapter that just fits right over, and I'll need to put uh, the rod retaining uh, clamp in place again. When you're putting these engines together, it sometimes makes it easier to have these tools. You can do it without these little uh, rod clamps. I really like them. That up a little bit, and then we should be able to squeeze that right in there. It just makes it easier to do this stuff uh, if you have the proper tools. All right. And you want to clean that surface up a little bit there. So that worked out fairly nice. It just gets it right in there, um, locks it in place. Yeah, these, you know, this is kind of pricey. Jim's, all the Jim stuff. But here, you know, I was able to make up this little adapter to sit on there to push that bearing in, or that seal in place. And everything works out great. Now these here, I don't remember what these uh, rod clamps are, but as I said before, they really come in handy. Oh man, that feels so good. Nice and tight and everything's great. Not overly tight, but nice and tight. Hopefully this motor will run for a few more years. Well, I kind of apologize. Uh, I didn't realize that the camera wasn't going, so I kind of got all this way. I've got uh, the oil pump on and retimed all the gearing and everything and just put this... Uh, cone on here with a new gasket and a new cam seal. Sometimes it's hard for me to do these videos because I get concentrating on what I'm supposed to be doing so I don't screw up. I'm a little further along here. I got the lifter blocks in. Uh, you note that I use rubber bands to hold those in place while I'm uh, removing them and then replacing them. That Wrapping around or just kind of hopes so they don't fall through. 
and uh, I've got the gaskets, base gaskets on, kind of getting everything ready here. I got the screen in, double checked all this over here. Uh, I'm gonna plug these holes here. I still have to put the I still have to put the feed and, uh, the feed in and uh, and the return in. But I think I'm going to hold off until it's in the bike, and then that way I have a little better uh, idea of how I'm going to run the lines. I've got the vent line in for the case, and I've got the upper vent line which goes to the to the oil tank. So this is all basically kind of set here. Um, I'm going to start tomorrow with um, putting the, uh, the cylinders on and going that way. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, we're going to work on uh, installing these pistons. But first, we're going to end up having to put uh, the rings on um, piston first. Now, there's several different ways you can do it. You can install the piston on, on this and then work it down through the deals. Or you can put these pistons together with the rings and slide them into place. And I think that that's the mode that we're going to try today. Um, I did it on this one. It seemed to work just fine. I've done them all different ways before. It's no big deal. So... First off, let's work on the piston. Sometimes you get pistons uh, that aren't marked which way they should go. And one of the easier ways that I've done it is that uh, you can measure the piston at the wrist pin. You can measure this, and what we're getting here is uh -huh, 1.36 and 1.33 so this the narrow side or the short side goes towards the rear so then i just mark the piston the longer side goes from the, it's just the way they're set up now some pistons will have are e equal uh, but these are a little bit different these are from v-twin so and this is how they suggest to do it so what now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the piston rings on. So we'll get my piston rings out here. Okay, we're going to do the expansion ring first. Now this is forward. This is looking at the front end, your front of your engines up here. So your expansion joint goes forward. So that joint right there goes forward. That's on number three ring. Now number three rail gap ring. The bottom one I set up over here at, a, at about two o'clock. So we get that all the way down to the bottom, being careful that you're not gonna break these things. Okay, so now we've got it located right here. We're gonna move this a little bit more this way. Okay, so it sits down in this little groove here and what it does is it catches that rail. There's a, there on this expansion joint, there's a little bit of a catch on there that those will catch, hook into. So the next one, of uh, number three here. We'll go over at about about 10 o'clock. Let me just mark it here, It'd be much easier. We have the front, we have the lower ring, and now we have the top ring of the, of the, of the oil sweep. Next, we're gonna go with uh, number two, and this is a compression ring. So that one, number two would be located over here at a roughly, I don't know, let's say four o'clock. So there's your gap right there. And over here at roughly, I don't know, let's call it eight o'clock is where the top ring goes, number one ring. And sometimes on these will have a dot indicating which way is up, but these don't very carefully you don't want to overstretch these because you can break these rings just be careful about it now one thing i like to do before i assemble this is i like to shoot a little bit of uh, wd on there i can think it kind of helps uh seat these rings a little better 
we know that this is forward and this would be the front part of uh, let me make darn sure yeah this is the front right here so we're going to install this get a little screwdriver and then you just slowly work these in and hopefully it drops in now after getting your wrist pin shoved into place you want to put your keeper in and this is a snap ring style they make other different styles they make but you want to make sure that this is all up in there and stuff so push on that a little bit get the set in there and make sure and then the big thing is to get the piston to go down inside the cylinder all right now before we shove this all the way down we want to make darn sure that this bolt because it's directly over top of this uh, cylinder bolt is in place when you shove that back down on there. Because otherwise you can't get this in or out. And then, of course, we're just putting in our, our little washers. And they have up on them, and that's the way they go. And then that's pretty simple. That's just basically how I do it. Um, and then I like to go around and just snug these down so everything sits down into place. I don't rink on them real hard. I just enough to snug it down onto the gasket. All right, cylinders are in place. One thing I might mention is that I, uh, I did put this SNS deal in to show you how to lay your rings out. This gives a good idea of how the gaps and everything should go on the rings. Well, another thing, another tool, if you note here, this is a crank holder that I, I made, and it's pretty simple. It's just a 5 16 screw at this end and a couple of quarters. And all those do is they just, they just screw into the, uh, the splines on the, on the crank pin there and uh, you just set those up on there and then i'm lined it up so that it goes in uh, the outer outer mounting hole for the primary now it's just a piece of round stock that i had a hole in it that was the right size i just bored through threaded this and bent a bracket and it's pretty simple and easy to make uh, if you have a welder or if you got a buddy that's got a welder, you can make up something like this. So, uh, what we've done so far is that we've trued uh, the crankshaft, put the new bearings and everything on it, um, put the cases together, threw on the timing uh, gears and such, mounted the pistons and the cylinders. So, this is part one. Uh, I'll finish up by doing a torque down with the new heads and everything else in and maybe setting it in the frame but I will set this all engine up we still have electrical to put on on the stator and everything so there's a lot of odds and ends that need to go together and we'll finish that up on episode two so if there's any questions, as always, you can put them in the comment section below, or you can send them to my email address at tmiyagi at hotmail.com. And if you've liked this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget that ringy-dingy button over there for the next episode coming up. So this is Mr. Miyagi saying, be safe out there. Hope to see you on the road. Ciao.